Well, hello there. I'm James Kotecki, and you're joining me here in the C-Space Influencer Studio at CES 2019. With us is the CMO of Pandora, Aimee Lapik. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, James, for having me. So you were here in the studio a year ago. Um, I want to first start out by asking you to define something that everybody here at CES probably knows, but maybe you define it a little bit differently. What is Pandora? Such a good question. You know, I would say Pandora is going through a real transition from being the real owner and leader of streaming music in the U.S. to streaming audio in the United States. And we're making that transition to wow our listeners and really drive their engagement, um, not only through music and comedy, which mm -hmm. we've had for years, uh, but recently, in the last month, we've added thousands of episodes of podcasts. Mm -hmm. And we've created the same kind of algorithm that serves up podcasts that we know you're going to love, even if you don't know them, based on your preferences and based on what you've told us and um, through your thumbs and through your skips and your replays. For podcasts, we've created that genome. And so we firmly believe that's what drives our listener engagement is incremental content. Is discoverability different when it comes to podcasts? Because if I think of a podcast that's 20, 30, 40 minutes, an hour long, yes. I might not know that I like it until minute 10, whereas music, I kind of know instantly whether I like it or not. It's such a great question. Um, so yes, from the consumer point of view, podcasts are, are very different in terms of how long it takes you to engage and, and whether you're going to like it or not. What we, I think what we're quite good at, and we're right now the only one in the marketplace that does this, is we anticipate what you're going to like based on your music preferences, as well as based on any other podcasts that you've liked in the past. We've built that scientific algorithm, and we're adding the art of individual curators as well to sort of anticipate um, what you might love. And it's that mix of music and podcasts that's going to be really different. We've also broken down our podcast into very snackable content, if you will. Mm. So we like to think about it as, as long as a song. And the episodes are literally um, very bite-sized so that you can listen to part of the podcast and know whether you're going to like it or not. Are any of these podcasts unique to Pandora itself? So we have, we for the last couple of years, we've had a very unique exclusive podcast with Questlove Supreme. Um, he's super well known in the music industry and has had a variety of different hosts um, over the years uh, that have set him apart. Uh, we we love having that exclusive content. It is it is our one and only exclusive podcast today. Uh, on our platform, in terms of digital streaming music, we own Serial Season Three, which is also exclusive to Pandora in terms of. Um, the streaming platform, and we're looking to add other exclusive content in the future. So are there any unique insights about, I, what was so cool about the music genome when it first came out, when yes. was it, 10, 15 years ago? Um, yes. The idea that, oh, the fact that I like this song means I like another song was kind of a mind-blowing idea, that because I like this many beats per minute yes. and strings and guitar, I might like another band I've never heard of. Are, do you get those same kind of counterintuitive insights based on the podcasting genome? We. That's how, we're, that's how we've actually built it. So yes, we've literally mapped podcast to podcast, very similarly to how we mapped song to song. But does it make artist any surprising artists. revelations as far as like, oh, I, th I like this crime podcast, therefore I might like this podcast on 18th century music, and I never even it's, knew I would, is it, it totally you know, across the board? It's a great question. I mean, for me, the podcasts that have been recommended to me are mostly around fitness, because I'm, <laughs> I like fitness as, sure. a, as a category and as like a fun activity. Um, and they're also around kind of drama and crime, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's also just interesting to me. So the fact that the two are together is surprising, but not to me because I, I have an affinity for both. So it depends on kind of the individual. I don't sure. think it would be all that surprising to the individual because hopefully we're mapped to what you actually are going to love. Right. Um, so as I mentioned, you were here with us in the studio one year ago yes. when you were basically brand new to the job. Day 10, <laughs> I believe, in the job, yes. So what have you learned in the last year? Oh my goodness, what have I not <laughs> learned in the last year, honestly? Um, so first and foremost, the importance of building a super strong team. Um, when I came to Pandora, there hadn't been a CMO in place for a long time. Um, and the first thing I did was rebuild my leadership team and the marketing organization. We've, we've basically replaced about 40% of the folks on the team, I think with an incredible high caliber team, I, I, they're amazing individuals. They bring a variety of different points of view and backgrounds um, to the table, and that's been really critical. So the importance of talent, I've kind of relearned 
Um, in my career, I've always known that that's really critical, but relearn that. I've also learned the importance of building a basic foundation in terms of how to measure marketing results. So Pandora is so data focused. I mean, we have the luxury of having so much data on our listeners, both demographic data, as well as um, psychographic data, as well as literal behavior in terms of thumbs up, thumbs down, et cetera. Um, it, this type of information makes it really critical for us to be able to measure our marketing campaigns um, and investments within, within vehicles, within channels, et cetera. When I first joined the company, we didn't have a way to do that, hmm. measure the ROI by different channel, by different um, customer segment, et cetera. So we rebuilt the foundation um, of how do you measure and track ROI based on long-term value of each different customer. I mean, it's literally down to the individual level, which is phenomenal. And we're able to change our media buys based on the LTVs that we're bringing in, in real time. Um, and the third thing I've learned is the importance of differentiation in such a crowded space. So. It's not new news, but it's not enough to have terrific ROIs. It's not enough to have great talent. You also have to have a brand identity and a brand presence. And so in the, in the last quarter, we launched our Sound On platform, which is all about how Pandora can make your life better no matter where you are and what moment you're in um, by literally bringing sound into the equation, whether it's playlist, whether it's music, whether it's podcasts, like relieve the stress of your everyday life by listening to sound. And that's been well received in the marketplace. And I think that coupled with actually being able to measure marketing results are allowing us to be just a smarter marketing organization. You talk about inserting sound into daily life. Um, tell me about some integrations or things that you have now or on the horizon with smart speakers, voice interactivity, Alexa, Google Home, Sonos, all those kind of things. Yeah, so we're, today we're in over 2,000 different connected devices. So Pandora is just a part of Alexa, is a mm -hmm. part of right. Google. Um, we've been continuing to integrate into everything that comes onto the marketplace. So we have a really strong partnership with Roku, for example, uh, very strong partnership with, um, with Sonos. What's really our big focus is voice and voice technology. And, it, and it's given how important it is to the consumer in terms of ease of use and ease of consumption of music and audio, et cetera, that plays right to our strengths because it's all about that audio experience. So we're very much focused on how do we develop our voice technology in um, tandem and actually leapfrogging where the rest of the um, where the rest of the uh, industry is at this point. Well, speaking of leapfrogging, is there any insight you can give me about what's ahead, what the roadmap looks like for 2019? Such a great question. So for us, it is about incremental content, as I mentioned. Um, we talked a little bit about this before, but we have a partnership and we're being acquired by SiriusXM, which we think is phenomenal for our listeners because it will be able to bring to the forefront new forms of content. It'll open up a whole host of different opportunities for us to partner together in terms of really being able to wow both the SiriusXM customer base and the Pandora customer base, which is well, well over 100 million strong, um, even more. So we're excited about that. We think our roadmap is about how do you take the best of both companies and like really serve it up to more to a larger audience. Um, and so you're the CMO of Pandora. What does it mean for the brand of Pandora to be acquired by XM Series? Can you talk about that? Are you allowed to talk about it's that? It's a great question. Um, to be super frank, it's something we're figuring out right now. Uh, we know we just got research back literally in the last 48 hours that talks about to our listeners and to the Sirius XM listeners how important the Pandora brand is and how highly valued it is. So the Pandora brand is not going away. It's about how we think about what does Pandora mean to the listeners versus what does Sirius XM mean to the listeners? And we frankly are figuring that out now. Um, one thing that you also talked about in 2018 that you were figuring out is experiential marketing. Yes. How do you give experiences to your users? I think you called them your super users or one group of people you yes. were thinking about. So tell me some spe specific examples about what kind of experiences you're excited about. It's such a, uh, yeah. So I, coming from a retail background, uh, as I mentioned last year, you I, were was, the CMO of I was the CMO of Banana Republic yeah. and I was at The Gap for about 14 years before. That cross section of both the physical experience and the digital experience is really critical, I think, in winning the hearts of consumers, right? It's, it's literally about how do you connect with consumers in a physical and a digital way. So a great example of how we treat our power users are we, um, we're introducing John Legend's Christmas album to an intimate group of power users uh, at Rockefeller Center at the Rainbow Room in December. It was literally less than 200 people Everyone who attended could attend for free because of their affinity for John Legend and, and based on their usage. And that's the kind of thing we want to reward our listeners with. Like if you love a, an artist or an album, um, we'll help introduce the next album or the next song to you 
for free, complimentary, based on your listening behavior. And do you make sure that are your power users like somehow really connected on social media too, so that that message doesn't just stay with the 200 people, but it gets out there to the um, world? So we would be really smart if we filtered that way. <laughs> <laughs> we, we happen to be lucky enough to also include influencers mm -hmm. as well, but we're really just rewarding our listeners who listen the most, not mm -hmm. necessarily who listen the most and are connected to a lot of people. It's about rewarding the, the people who have made Pandora great. Um, one thing that has been, an, I suppose, kind of an existential question looming over streaming for a while, and people have been asking this, is, is streaming good for artists? And I saw some news recently with Taylor Swift, when she was signing her most recent deal, did something where it was clear that she was thinking about that issue. So clearly this is still at the forefront. What's Pandora's take and where are you at with it now? So today in the U.S., about 75% of music is consumed through streaming. And so in order to wow. actually like honestly be able to break a new album or a new song, et cetera, there needs to be a close partnership with the artists and streaming platforms. We absolutely value the artists. We put their, we put their needs high on the list. We partner with them, as you mentioned, on social media to make sure that they get the reach that they need. Um, but I think it behooves both parties to partner really well together because that's how consumers are listening to music at this point. It's not about the CDs of yesteryear. And yes, there are CD sales still, but that's not where music is going. And so it really would help the artists and the streaming platforms to like work together really consistently. 75% of streaming, and streaming in this, in this metric does not include radio or anything else. It's on digital streaming is 75%? Digital and, um, and satellite streaming. Okay, yeah. wow. Um, do you think that number will be higher by the end of 2019 significantly? It's such a good question. I think it would probably be slightly higher, but not significantly higher. Because there will always be a, a group of listeners right. who love AM, FM, radio, for example. Right. I and mean, that continues to be the highest share. It's just people listen to music in a variety of different forms. And then it's the people who buy vinyl, I suppose, is an even smaller subset, perhaps. It's a smaller subset, but actually that's growing. Uh, there's like a, a, a group of people who are love the vinyl records, and I've recently been talking to folks who think that that's actually a growing trend. Do you think that Pandora could actually become involved with selling physical, tangible music at some point in the future as a kind of a compliment? If you love streaming this thing, hey, why don't you buy the actual physical artifact of it's it too? It's definitely not on our roadmap, <laughs> but never say never. You never know. Okay. Well, never <laughs> say never is a great and optimistic way to end this conversation. <laughs> Amy Lapick is the CMO of Pandora. Thanks so much for joining me here in the studio. Thank you so much, James. And thank you so much for watching. Keep it right here. Keep watching. More great conversations about your future are just ahead.